As one of the most anticipated launches in recent years, the first launch of the Sierra Space Dream Chaser spacecraft will take place in 2025. However, this launch window is under threat following the news that the ULA Vulcan Centaur rocket, intended to launch the space plane, is unlikely to be ready in time. This delay poses a setback for those eager to see Dream Chaser enter service. Given these challenges, Sierra Space may need to consider switching to a more reliable launch provider, such as SpaceX's Falcon 9. Despite the potential benefits of this option, the company has not yet explored it. So why? Find out everything in today's episode. Anyway, thank you for helping us reach 88,000 subscribers. Our next goal is 100,000, and we need your support to get there. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We appreciate your help. Thank you. United Launch Alliance's Vulcan Centaur rocket is considered ULA's new generation vehicle. Given that it uses the new BE-4 engine from Blue Origin to power the newer rocket's first stage, as opposed to the Russian-made RD-180 used by Atlas V. Its main purpose is to meet the needs of the National Security Space Launch NSSL program. Despite ULA's long-standing partnership with the Pentagon, the Vulcan Centaur faces significant challenges in a highly competitive market dominated by agile private companies, particularly SpaceX. Therefore, ULA CEO Tori Bruno has long been obsessed with bettering this vehicle. For example, advocated expanded capabilities for the Centaur upper stage. In 2020, he outlined plans for an enhanced Centaur 5 featuring increased energy, thrust, and duration capabilities to enable complex trajectories and ambitious future missions. More recently, he has promoted a high-performance, long-duration version that could operate for days or weeks in support of U.S. military operations. Also, ULA believes it can attract commercial launches, which started with the contract to launch Sierra Space's Dream Chaser space plane in Vulcan's second certification mission. Dream Chaser, often referred to as a mini-shuttle, is highly anticipated as the ideal alternative to Boeing's struggling Starliner. In June 2023, Sierra Space and NASA entered into an unfunded Space Act agreement under the CCSC2 initiative primarily focusing on the development of a crewed version of Dream Chaser and the Large Integrated Flexible Environment Pathfinder module. This initiative is part of NASA's broader strategy to promote commercial activities in low Earth orbit as it prepares for the decommissioning of the International Space Station, ISS, in 2030. To align with this strategy, the cargo version known as Tenacity is set to fly first. After several delays, it was initially scheduled for its inaugural flight at the end of 2024 aboard a Vulcan rocket. However, ULA has expressed a desire to launch in the fall to expedite certification of its rocket, leading them to replace Dream Chaser with a dummy payload for this launch. Finally, Vulcan launched in October as expected, and now it is waiting to become certified to launch national security payloads. On the other hand, it pushes Tenacity's inaugural flight to sometime in 2025, but given the current situation, it could be mid-2025 at the earliest. So why? The next launch window of Dream on Vulcan will likely not be CERT-3, because ULA will spend that mission on the USSF's National Security Space Launch NSSL, contract. You know, the Pentagon is ULA's most important customer so the company certainly prioritizes the military missions. According to Spaceflight Now, the first national security mission on Vulcan might not launch until April 2025, at the earliest. Under the NSSL Phase II contract awarded in 2020, ULA and SpaceX split a slate of about 35 missions. ULA has only launched one of these on its legacy Atlas V rocket, leaving as many as 25 launches still to be completed by Vulcan by fiscal year 2027. Two missions, USSF-106 and USSF-87, were originally performed this year, but have now slipped to 2025. 
ULA was targeting a November launch for USSF-106. But with only one week left in the year, a 2024 launch window is increasingly unlikely. To make the matter more complex, ULA's Vulcan rocket faced delays in becoming certified to launch military payloads caused by cumulative delays and uncertainties. The government's plan is to complete its evaluation and certification in the first quarter of the calendar year 2025. For now, the Space Force relies solely on SpaceX's Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets for NSSL missions. This dependency underscores the urgency of Vulcan's certification to meet the program's two-provider mandate. While the time for Phase 2 of the contract is running out, ULA has just been selected for Phase 3. All of this reduces the opportunity for Dream Chaser to launch on Vulcan, potentially being delayed indefinitely if any issues arise. Of course, Dream Chaser's maiden launch can't be delayed anymore since it needs to quickly come online to serve NASA's contracts before the ISS's retirement in 2030. So, what is the optimal solution here? For Sierra Space, perhaps shifting to a more competent supplier is the best ideal. The combination of Dream Chaser and SpaceX's Falcon rocket is poised to be a powerful alliance in spaceflight. Dream Chaser, a cutting-edge mini-shuttle, boasts advanced technologies, including being the only commercial space plane capable of landing on runways, high reusability, and remarkable flexibility. Notably, Tenacity, the cargo version of Dream Chaser, is designed to be compatible with various launch vehicles and will be launched in a stowed configuration within a payload fairing. This approach enhances flexibility and reduces ascent loads compared to traditional space shuttles. On the other hand, SpaceX's Falcon 9 has solidified its reputation as the most frequently launched rocket in the spaceflight, achieving an impressive 425 times. With 422 full mission successes since its inaugural flight in 2010, it has clearly proven to be more reliable than the Vulcan. However, while it is technically feasible for Tenacity to be launched on a Falcon 9, there are challenges related to its increased mass when paired with the Shooting Star cargo module. The combined weight of Tenacity and Shooting Star exceeds the original design parameters for the Falcon 9, potentially complicating the launch. Given these considerations, it may be more feasible to launch Tenacity on another vehicle if ULA's Vulcan is unavailable. Blue Origin's new Glen, with its larger fairing dimensions, could serve as an alternative. In the future, following the successful deployment of the cargo version, the crewed Dream Chaser may also find a place atop SpaceX's Falcon Heavy. Additionally, when Starship becomes operational, it could usher in a new era of collaboration between Sierra Space's tenacity and the largest rocket ever built. As SpaceX and other innovative startups continue to push boundaries, their partnerships could revolutionize space exploration while emphasizing the importance of learning from past experiences in rocketry. For ULA, to survive in the harsh competition market, CEO Tori Bruno has proposed a pretty wild idea. It is a new military application for the Vulcan Centaur rocket, envisioning it as a space interceptor, capable of protecting U.S. assets in orbit from potential threats. This concept aims to differentiate ULA from competitors like SpaceX by positioning the Vulcan Centaur not just as a launch vehicle, but also as an orbital deterrent against adversaries targeting Space Force assets. Bruno emphasized the need for a platform that is lightning fast, long range, and if necessary, very lethal advocating for enhanced capabilities of the Centaur upper stage. He previously outlined plans for an upgraded Centaur 5 that would offer increased energy and thrust to support complex military operations. With the ongoing threat from nations like China, Bruno argued that the U.S. needs a responsive capability to counteract potential attacks on its space assets. As ULA seeks to reclaim its position in the military launch market, which it has lost to SpaceX, 
Bruno urged the government to foster unique capabilities among launch providers, rather than focusing solely on price competition. He expressed optimism about ULA's future. Despite delays in Vulcan's introduction and speculation about potential sales by its parent companies, Lockheed Martin and Boeing. In terms of price, Bruno reveals the cost of a Vulcan rocket was less than $100 million, making it competitive with SpaceX's Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. This will be a breaking point for ULA since its lines of rockets are notorious for extremely expensive tag prices compared to SpaceX rockets. ULA's launch prices have been reported to be as high as $420 million per launch, especially for military contracts, compared to SpaceX's typical costs ranging from $65 million to $150 million, depending on the mission type. For example, the base price for an Atlas V launch can range from $109 million to $153 million, depending on the configuration and additional services required. In contrast, SpaceX's Falcon 9 is priced at approximately $65 million for basic commercial launches. There are some factors influencing the high costs. ULA offers numerous rocket configurations, 41 in total, to meet specific customer needs, particularly from the military. This high level of customization adds to operational costs. Additionally, ULA previously used the high-cost Russian-made RD-180 engines for the Atlas V, which contributed to increasing the rocket's cost per launch. Equally important, ULA emphasizes reliability and mission assurance, which can lead to higher costs due to rigorous testing and quality assurance processes. The company argues that this reliability reduces overall customer costs related to insurance and delays, making it a better value despite higher upfront prices. Last but not least, although the competitive landscape has pressured ULA to reduce prices, ULA still positions itself as a premium provider, rather than the lowest cost option. For over a decade, United Launch Alliance, ULA, a collaboration between Boeing and Lockheed Martin, maintained a stronghold on Pentagon contracts for launching spy satellites. ULA was the Pentagon's primary partner, enjoying what appeared to be an unshakable monopoly. However, the dynamics of the space industry have shifted significantly and ULA now faces serious competition from newer, more agile players. Elon Musk's SpaceX has rapidly gained traction, securing around 40% of Pentagon contracts in recent years due to its innovative approach and competitive pricing. Compounding ULA's challenges, Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin is preparing to enter the market with its new Glenn rocket, which poses a threat to ULA's market share once it receives military certification. Simultaneously, ULA is dealing with internal issues that exacerbate the pressure from its competitors. Reports indicate that ULA has experienced budget overruns and declining revenues, primarily due to delays from customers who have postponed launches. These financial difficulties have sparked discussions within Boeing and Lockheed about potentially divesting from ULA reflecting a decreasing interest from its parent companies. A spokesperson for ULA acknowledged that, while the company remains profitable, its earnings have fallen short of internal targets. These financial difficulties have contributed to operational delays, particularly in preparing for critical Pentagon missions. ULA faced significant hurdles in gearing up for its last launch on July 30th. Quality control issues required the company to bring in additional workers from 500 miles away to Cape Canaveral, Florida, to ensure the mission was ready on time, and it was. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.